We just finished with Before You Read Reading Habits, so we set goals for reading, we activated our prior knowledge, and we previewed. Now we're going to actually start reading the text, and we're going to look for and activate these things. So we're going to picture what we are actually reading about, we're going to predict what might happen next, why the author is telling us this information, what might be happening in the story. We're going to monitor our comprehension. So am I understanding what I'm reading? Did I just read the same line five times? Do I know that vocabulary word? And we're going to correct any misunderstandings. So if I don't know a vocabulary word, let's look it up. I also want to relate the material to what I know and it's personal in my life. And then I want to mark up the text, underline words, write in the margins, and highlight concepts. So all of these skills we're going to be doing as we read together this chapter. So this is a process that I want you as students to do every single time you read something. Let's see it in action. I just put this chapter, Effects of Water Pollution, into my Google Docs so you could actually watch me uh, comment on the document itself. So here we are, Effects of Water Pollution. I'm looking at this picture and I'm relating it to my personal experience. Uh, we have some neighbor lakes that look like this. Also I've got some bodies of water on my farm that tend to get algae and really ridden with this green color so automatically it relates to me because I'm thinking what causes this? So here we go. Can water have too many in nutrients? Well I would think that it can. A person does. A person can have too many nutrients. So I bet it's the same for water. That's my comment as I'm reading because it's making me engage with the material. Excess nutrients can cause algae to grow like crazy. Too much algae causes the green slime on the water that you see in the picture. Oh, it's too much algae. These excess nutrients come from fertilizers that were carried by the runoff from farmland. So this makes me think, uh-oh, my animals are causing this problem because they're having runoff from their feces and like my big manure pile from my horses and stuff, this type of water pollution can have serious consequences from other forms of life trying to survive here. So it makes me think I need to figure out a better way to manage the waste so that it's not running off into the ditches and then going into the streams of where I live. Effects of water pollution. Water pollutants can have an effect on both the ecology of ecosystems and on humans. As a result of water pollution, humans may not be able to use a waterway for recreation and fishing. So why would I not be able to use the waterway? Maybe it's too polluted? Or it needs to be protected from the traffic of my vehicles maybe? Drinking water can also be infected affected if a toxin enters the groundwater. That makes total sense because if I'm on a well or the city water, they get their water from the ground. Eutrophication. Okay, I don't know this word. This is a really big word so I'm going to highlight it because it's important to me. Eutrophication. In a marine ecosystem, algae are the producers. Okay, that makes sense. They produce the energy that other things in through photosynthesis. They prov provide glucose for the ecosystem. So glucose I know is a sugar. So can too much algae be a bad thing? Eutrophication is an over enrichment of chemical nutrients in a body of water. Okay, so I've found my definition for eutrophication. It is too many nutrients in the water. Usually these nutrients are the nitrogen and phosphorus found in fertilizers. Runoff from lawns or farms can wash fertilizers into rivers or coastal waters. And that responds with the information that we learned up here. So they're repeating the same information. Plants are not the only things that grow more quickly with added fertilizers. Algae like the excess nutrients in fertilizers too. Oh, that makes sense. I put fertilizer on my garden to make my plants grow so if the same fertilizers got into the water system it would make the plants in the water which is the algae grow faster when there are a high level of nutrients in the water algae populations will grow very quickly this leads to overgrowth of algae called algal blooms however these algae do not live very long huh. I wonder why 
algae doesn't live very long. Can you predict why? They die and begin to de decompose. This process uses oxygen, removing the oxygen from the water. Without oxygen, fish and shelf shellfish cannot live, and this results in the death of these organisms. Holy cow, this is a serious problem. So what it's saying is when the algae die, oxygen is taken from the water to decompose that algae and therefore the living things that need oxygen from the water can't survive. This is a serious problem. I need to make sure that I'm not having this continuation of runoff if I can prevent it. Certain types of algal blooms can also create toxins. And toxins, I know, is another word for poisons. These toxins can enter shellfish. If humans eat these shellfish, then they can get very sick. These toxins cause neurological problems in human. Neurological. Now, I think I know what that means. I think it has to do with the brain. But I'm going to look it up just in case because I want to monitor neurological definition. I want to monitor my reading. It affects the nervous system, so the brain and the spinal cord. Okay. So I can go back and put my comment in here. It's brain and spinal cord. I hope you can see the process that I've gone through in reading this. I've made comments. I have predicted why the author is telling me some things. I can picture, I've monitored my comprehension, and I can definitely relate. This reading habit is one that you should practice every single time you read something, whether it's the newspaper or a magazine, and most importantly, your homework assignments.